So in, why is insulin associated with cancer? Well, insulin is a mitogenic hormone, which means that it promotes cell division. It also permit, promotes the uptake and metabolism of glucose as a fuel. And this is very useful to cancer cells, which, as we know, like to burn glucose as a fuel. But the cancer cells use that glucose for something else. They use the carbon backbone for infrastructure, for building more cancer cells. Cancer cells have a huge need for raw materials to build more, and they can get this from glucose. And insulin will drive this. It will drive the uptake of the glucose into the cell. And obesity is associated with hyperinsulinemia. We often assume that people with obesity are insulin resistant and hyperinsulinemic, and that's true in some cases, but not all. There all are individuals with obesity who aren't insulin resistant. But it turns out that across the board, there's an upregulation of insulin secretion in obesity, and that's shown in this slide here. This was a study done that, that matched normal weight and obese individuals for insulin sensitivity using the euglycemic clamp. And it looked at both basal fasting levels of insulin and insulin secretion in response to glucose. And the panel on the left shows fasting insulin. The panel in the middle is insulin secretion rate after the glucose challenge. And the panel on the right is insulin area under the curve. And the dark bars are the obese individuals. So you can see that even when you take insulin sensitivity out of the picture, you still have high, relative hyperinsulinemia and obesity. So by definition, almost all obese individuals are going to have some level of hyperinsulinemia. Insulin in its own right is mitogenic, but it also suppresses the binding protein for, for IGF-1. It's called IGF-BP-1. And this increases the free or bioavailable concentrations of the growth factor IGF-1. And probably you're well aware that that's one of the biggest growth factors in the cancer field is, is levels of IGF-1. So in summary then, the obesity-cancer connection. Obesity is probably mostly a marker for high blood glucose and growth factors. That's not to say that obesity itself isn't doing something to promote the, the development of cancer. It, obesity is also associated with a pro-inflammatory environment. So I'm not completely leaving obesity off the hook. I think it could contribute to cancer progression in some ways, but I think in many cases obesity is simply a marker for a metabolic environment that's conducive to cancer. Cancer cells need glucose, insulin, and IGF-1. So if we're going to do a diet intervention, what we would want to do is tackle it from that perspective. We would want a diet intervention that would reduce glucose, insulin, and IGF-1. And with any hope, this would, could both reduce cancer risk, and in terms of therapy, it could synergize with existing therapies in treating existing cancer.